This is a quick demo of uh, building something cool using Claude Code for web. Um, so I use Claude Code a lot, and one of the things Claude Code does is it gives you these big terminal flows full of interesting information. I've always wanted a way to share those. So a while ago, I figured out a way to do that. I built this little tool called RTF to HTML, because it turns out when you paste your terminal into um, Firefox, it produces this raw RTF data which you can convert to HTML, which I've done here. And then that HTML looks like this, which is kind of cool. That's something I want to share. So the way I've been sharing these is I go to GitHub Gists and I share something called index.html. Now I've got a gist with that HTML in. And then a useful little trick you can do here is you can go to gist, gistpreview.github.io, paste that in here, and you can get back a link so I can now send that link to people and they can see what I can see. That's cool. It's a few too many steps. So what I want to do is build a new tool that does all of this in one go, basically a variant of this tool here. This tool lives in its HTML JavaScript and lives in my simonw slash tools repository. So I'm going to fire up claude.ai slash code and I'm going to tell it to build me a new tool. Um, I'm going to say in SimW tools, and I wrote, typed this out earlier, but basically I'm saying build a new tool called terminal to HTML, which lets users copy rich text directly from the terminal and paste it into a paste area, then produce the HTML version of that in the text area with a copy button, below is a button that says save this to a gist, and below that's a full preview. It'll be similar to that RTF to HTML tool, but it doesn't show the raw RTF and it has this save to a gist button. The key thing about save to a gist is that I've built this once in the past before. Um, it's this thing here, right? Um, this is an open AI thing where I can say, talk fast, a poem about pelicans. I click generate. And this thing is hitting the open AI API, their audio API. It generates this. Sure. Here's a short poem about pelicans. I wouldn't call that talking Graceful far, in the morning light. Didn't work so great. With wings spread wide in flight. But what I can now do is I can click authenticate with GitHub. I can do the GitHub auth dance via a little Cloudflare work that I set up. Then I can click save as gist and it saves it and it gives me back a URL. Um, this one here. So it's dumped all of that audio data into in JSON in a gist. And it's given me this audio player link, which loads that gist. Sure. Here's a short. Let me play it back. So as you can see in the past, I've solved this whole problem, the gist, the, the save to gist problem. So that's what I told to do. I said, so what the button should do is it should do a local storage thing. It should get users signed in with a token if they aren't already. Basically do what that other file does. If you look at this prompt, really all I'm doing here is I'm saying, look at this existing thing, RTF to HTML, and look at this thing, existing thing, open AI audio output, and mix them together and add a few extra things. I want it to generate the URL gist preview.github.io with that gist ID add a couple of copy buttons, make it mobile friendly, have it courier green text on black. Let's kick this off. So if the user pastes and the pasted data is HTML, but not RTF, that's something which I've noticed sometimes happens. Incidentally, this is a Claude code bug at the moment. That session creation failed thing isn't actually true. If you refresh the page and see the session did get created and it's now churning away and it's doing its job. I missed that in the past, and so I've run the same job multiple times because I submitted it thinking it hadn't submitted properly. So anyway, let's see. I've told it to... I also said, if it doesn't have rich tech, RTF, which seems to happen in Chrome, use HTML instead, fall back on text. There's a few bits and pieces here. But really, all I've done is given it these sort of five paragraphs of instructions. And so off it goes. So you can see it creates itself a little to-do list. It's going to read the file I told it to understand that, and then it read this other file to understand that. Um, then it's going to create this new file with the paste area and the HTML output. It's going to add that save to gist functionality, terminal themed styling, green on black with courier font, I told it. Um, I told it to, to, to go with that sort of aesthetic. And test and verify all functionality. I didn't actually ask it to test. I don't know if, um, I don't know if testing's going to work because I didn't give it... I didn't give it an environment that lets it install Playwright and stuff. So that might, it might fail at that point. We'll see what happens. So here we go. It says, I've reviewed both reference files. Now let me create this new terminal to HTML tool. Um, so while it's churning away, 
I'll show you a little bit more about how this tools repository works. So this is my collection of effectively vibe coded little HTML tools. Um, it lives in the GitHub repository and I've got a GitHub workflow automation that publishes it to GitHub pages. So every time I land something on here, GitHub kicks in and it sticks it up on tools.simonwillison.net. This is actually just GitHub's hosting. And it does a few nice things. It shows them recently added ones. It's got this search interface that I use to um, search for and quickly navigate to different tools. And there's also this magic colophon page. This page lists every single tool that I've got and has AI generated descriptions of every single one, which is great for me to quickly search for things like which one of these dealt with um, ARIA roles. And I can search for ARIA and find it down here. It also, um, if you click on development history, it shows you all of the commits, which often include little pieces of information, links to the um, transcripts that I use to generate that commit. So there's a lot of information buried around here. Let's go back to Claude code. What's it up to? Um, it's done. It's done. It says the change has been committed and pushed to this branch. Um, it's got all of those features. So what I can do now is I can create a pull request and I'll do that as a draft. And this kicks off another neat little automation. Because if we look at these checks, one of these checks is Cloudflare Pages. So I'm using GitHub Pages to host the production site. Cloudflare Pages runs on my PRs. And the only reason it's there is because it knows how to deploy things, uh, deploy preview builds of individual pull requests. So if we wait a few more seconds, this should churn through. And hopefully, this is now... That's taking a little bit longer than I thought it was going to. But what this should do is it should give me a URL, I think. Assets uploaded. Sounds promising. It says your site was deployed. Here we go. So I can go here. And then what was this one called? It's called terminal.html. Here it is. This is the thing that it's just written for me. Let's test it out. I'm going to copy and paste all of this into here. Boop. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? Now. I happen to, I don't think Authenticate with GitHub will work because I think that's pointed at my tools.simonwilson.net site. So I think the domain here is wrong. Um, I've got a copy HTML button that works. Um, this is looking pretty good. I'm going to land it. I'm going to land that pull request. Where did the pull request go? Probably in tools. Uh, pull request. It's a draft at the moment. Here we go. The tests did fail. Um, I'm going to, I think I can land it anyway. I don't think I've blocked my, um, I don't think I've blocked my um, deploys on the test passing. So it's landed. And now what should be happening is this commit here should be deploying to GitHub pages. What's doing here as part of this process here, one of the things it's going to do is it's going to generate new documentation. Um, so that's this step here. Once it's installed Jekyll, I didn't realize it was going to do that. Um, it's doing the checkout. It's setting up Python. It's installing my LLM tool, which is what runs the, um, runs the prompt to generate the, um, the new documentation. Um, generating bits and pieces of metadata, commit and push of docs have changed. Here we go, I think. No, it wasn't that one, was it? Well, if this did work, we will see a commit. Here we go, generated docs. So this is where it wrote a little bit of automated documentation. This tool converts terminal output in multiple forms to standalone HTML code. That's good. Let's, let's give it a go. So I think it's deployed. Here it is. This is on the production site. We'll paste that in again. Oh, what happened there? Oh, that's because I pasted the actual HTML. Um, we'll try this one more time. There we go. Save this to a gist. Saving. Copy URL. It worked. Look at that. Awesome. And that's the entire project. We now have a little tool on this website here where you can paste in your terminal on a Mac and it'll render it and give you the ability to, to share it with other people. 
I am going to quickly try this in Chrome, um, just on the hunch that it might not work, because I know that Chrome's copy and paste works differently from Firefox. So here's Chrome, paste in there. It did work, and the reason it worked is that I anticipated this and told it to use HTML if HTML was available on the clipboard. So I think that's going to do the exact same thing. If we click Authenticate with GitHub here, we'll actually see the authentication flow. So here I'd have to sign in and that would give me a token and so forth. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this. This is a pretty, pretty reasonable example of how I'm using Claude Code, especially Claude Code on the web. Like I um, spent maybe three or four minutes writing out this prompt and then I just on the spur of the moment decided to record it. But yeah, it's, it's really cool. If you haven't played with this, I very firmly recommend giving it a go.